In this segment, we're going to discuss the implications of Green's theorem for finding areas. In other words, we want to combine what we know about double integrals over a region R and how to find an area using them with the relationship that Green's theorem gives us between the double integral over, over R and the line integral so that we can use line integrals to find area. Now remember, the area of a region R is equal to the double integral over R of 1 dA. And Green's theorem refers to the double integral over R of the partial derivative of G with respect to X minus the partial derivative of F with respect to Y. So what we need is these two integrands to match up. In other words, how can we get partial derivative of G with respect to X minus the partial derivative of F with respect to Y to be equal to 1. Well, what we need here is either for the partial derivative of X to be 1 and DF DY to be 0. I mean, there are many values potentially that could cause this to equal 1, but for convenience, we're going to take one of these to be 0. So we're going to explore two possibilities. One is letting d, 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 g, d, x equal 1 and in that case d, f, d, y would be, have to be equal to 0 in order to give us a value of 1. Or the other possibility would be if we let d, g, d, x be 0 and in that case we would need d, f, d, y to be negative 1 in order to get a positive 1 here. Now how could we make that happen? Well, that's only going to happen if we have um, our g of x, y equal to x, because we're taking the partial with respect to x and getting 1. And to get 0, we could have any constant, but we can just take f of x, y for convenience to be 0, and that would give us that there. And similarly, to make this happen, we could consider the case where g of x, y is 0 and f of x, y is equal to negative y. All right, so what we're saying here is that um, since we know that these two quantities are equal, if we want this to be 1, it would be enough to fill in either one of these scenarios. For example, I could take the line integral of 0 dx plus x dy, or in other words, just the line integral of x dy, and that would be equal to the double integral over r of 1 dA. So here we have a new formula for area. Now another possibility would be to use the second case where we let g of x be 0 and f of x, y be negative y. In this case, we have the line integral of negative y dx is equal to the area. In fact, there's even a third area formula that's commonly used and derived from these two by adding these two definite integrals, or excuse me, line integrals together and taking half of their value, we also would get a formula for area. Let's summarize these three formulas. So here's a summary of the area formulas that we discussed in the last segment. If we're looking at a double integral, the area formula is the double integral over the region R that we're trying to find the area of dA. If we're looking at a line integral, assuming that we have a closed path C that's the boundary of the region we're finding the area of, 
Then we have the line integral over c of x dy, or the line integral over c of negative y dx, or combining the two, the line integral over c of negative y dx plus x dy would give us double the area, so we take half of that. Now this third formula looks more complicated, but in some cases it just gives us an easier integral to work with. In this example, we're asked to use line integrals to find the area of the given triangle. Now, obviously, this is a triangle that we could find the area of. Let's go ahead and, um, and basically prove using line integrals that the area of this triangle is one-half AB. And so I'm going to choose to use the formula the integral over C of x dy. Remember here, C represents the boundary of the region we're finding the area of. And so notice that in this case, C is not entirely smooth, although it is piecewise smooth. So what we're going to have to do is actually break this integral up into three pieces. And so we're going to take the integral of x dy for the portion of the curve, which I'm going to call C1 plus the uh, line integral over the portion of the curve I'm going to call C2, plus the line integral over the portion of the curve that I'm going to call C3, and add them up. All right, now in order to evaluate these line integrals, we need to parameterize our curves. Let's look at C1. C1 goes from the point 0, 0 to the point A0. So the x values are changing, but the y values are staying 0. x is going from 0 to A, but y is staying 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to let x equal t and y equal 0 as t goes from 0 to A. On C2, we have this line, which, by the way, this line has a slope of negative b over a, and it has a y-intercept of b. So the equation of this line would be y equals negative b over ax plus b. All right, so our x values are ranging from a to 0, if I'm going to keep going in the same counterclockwise direction all the way around my path here. Um, the x values are going from a to 0, and we can get the y values by plugging in um, that x value to negative b over a plus b. So that means that I'm going to let my x be my parameter t. Oops, I forgot my x here. There we go. And then I'm going to just plug in t for x and get my parameterization of y. But we do need to remember that t is going from a to 0 on this portion of the curve. And then for the next segment, my x values are all 0. My y values are going from b down to 0, and so I'm going to let y equal t and x equal 0 and have my t going from b to 0. All right now let's think about how we actually evaluate these integrals. Um, we use the parameterization, and so we want to plug in x of t, and then dy becomes y prime of t dt. And the same thing for each of these. Of course, in each case, our parameterization is different. So in this first integral, we have the integral from 0 to a 
of x of t, which is just t, times y prime of t, which is 0 dt. On this segment, we're going to have our integral going from a to 0. x is just t. y prime is going to be negative b over a dt. And in the last segment, we have the integral from b to 0. x of t is 0. y prime of t is 1 dt. Now the first and the last definite integrals are just 0. And so we're left to integrate this expression here. Which is going to give us negative b over a times t squared over 2 evaluated from a to 0. Plugging in 0 for t, we're going to have 0 minus. Plugging in a for t, we're going to have negative b a squared over 2a, which reduces to a b over 2, or 1 half a b, which is the area of that triangle. Now, just so that we don't forget, we could have also used the double integral approach to area, or for that matter, a definite integral approach. But just to remind you, since it's relatively new, let's say that we were asked to do the double integral approach to the area of this region, which we're calling R. So in this case, we would just need to change this to an iterated double integral. If we took our x values to be the constants 0 to a, then we would let our y values range from y equals 0 up to the equation of this line, which we know is negative b over ax plus b. dy dx, with the dx on the outside because the x's are on the outside. All right, our first integration is going to give us just y evaluated from 0 to b over ax plus b, which is going to give us, when we plug negative b over ax plus b in for y, just negative b over ax plus b. Plugging in 0, of course, will give us 0, so we don't need to write that. And then integrating, we're going to have negative b over a times x squared over 2 plus bx evaluated from 0 to a. Plugging in a, we're going to have negative b a squared over 2a plus b a minus 0, but we don't need to write that. And then notice that this is going to be negative b a over 2, which plus b over, plus b a rather, is b a over 2, or 1 half a b. So we have two different approaches to solving this problem.